guys, Jonathan from jwallphotography.com and today I'm making a video especially for the beginner and amateur photography group here on Facebook. So what are we doing today? We are shooting astrophotography. We get a lot of questions about this and I wanted to dive in and show you guys how to do that. It's really simple and you're gonna be making star photos in no time. The first thing you need is a wide angle lens that is fast. For me, I'm using my 14 millimeter 2.8 Rokinon. The other thing you need is a tripod. With this, the tripod and your camera, you're gonna be making some awesome, awesome star photography photos, also known as astrophotography photos in no time. You don't need any special buttons right out of the gate or anything like that, your camera can do the rest. Let's get outside, it's super clear tonight so we should be able to get some great shots. Let's go. Okay, so we've made it out here, we're at a lake. You can't see anything because it's pure black out here. But we've made it out to the lake and we're gonna be taking the photos. So we're gonna look down here real quick and show you the setup. I've got my uh, DSLR on live view. I'm using a Nikon D610, my 14 millimeter Rokinon. Um, and it's a 2.8 aperture. That's gonna allow me to get the most light in there as possible. Now, there's a quick way to be able to tell how long of a shutter speed you need to use for your astrophotography. Since stars move across the sky at night because of the Earth's rotation, if you shoot too long, you'll actually get trails. Those are cool, but not what you're wanting to go for because if they just move a little bit, it looks like a blurry picture. So what we're gonna do is first find out what shutter speed we need to use. How we do that is we take 500 divided by our focal length, divided by any crop factors that there may be. I'm using a full frame camera. If you're using a Canon um, uh, camera that has a crop sensor, you'll divide it by, or multiply it by 1.6 on your focal length, or a Nikon, you'll multiply it by 1.5. But today, to make it simple, we're just using a full frame. So I'm using 14 millimeters, and we're gonna take 500 divided by 14 and it comes out to about 35 and some change. That means I can shoot up to 35 seconds before we start noticing that streak. I'm gonna pull it back to 30 so I'm super safe on that. Now to set focus on this, what we need to do is go to infinity and then pull it back some. Or you can bring a, a strong flashlight, find something on the ground that is far enough out to be infinity and then you can focus like that. But for me, since I didn't do that, I just pull it all the way out to infinity and then back just a little bit. And that usually gets the star focus pretty spot on. You can do a couple test shots and find that out. Now, how do you know how much ISO you're gonna need? Well, for this, I'm gonna start out at 1600 because I know my camera handles ISO 1600 really well. You might wanna start out a little lower on your ISO, but for me, I know that's about where I'm gonna start. So let's give this shot a go, and we'll see, we'll see what it looks like. Now, to make the composition, I did take the video light and walk the bank to make sure that what I wanted was in the shot. You can use a flashlight. I didn't bring one today. I didn't think to bring one. But uh, you can use a flashlight, shine it around, and then set your focus that way, or you can use it to make sure your composition is what you want. So we're gonna do that. We've got our shutter set at 30 seconds. We've got our um, aperture at 2.8 and our ISO at 1600 on a nice solid tripod. And we're just gonna hit the button. Now we're gonna do that here in a second and actually do it without the light on because lights anywhere in the scene will cause it to blow out. So we're gonna turn the light off, take the picture, and this is the picture that we got. Okay. So you can see that's the image we just took using those settings. We're gonna take a couple more and we're also gonna pan across the sky. We've got a little bit of clouds moving in so we're gonna to have to do this kind of quick. So how I'm gonna do the pan is I'm gonna pull up the live menu and I'm gonna move it to the left about 30% of the scene. And then I'm just gonna hit take a picture. I'm gonna do the same thing, move it about 30% back to the center and then move it about 30% over. You can tell because you'll cut about a third of your picture off every single time. That way, whenever you put it in a Lightroom and hit pano, it just does it beautifully for it and you don't got to do a lot of the extra work of trying to stitch stuff together. So this is a panorama of the sky using the same settings, a 30 second shutter speed, 2.8 aperture, 1600 ISO. Here's what that looks like. 
Okay, so that's the panorama. I'm really excited about this because it turned out pretty neat. We've got a little bit of backlight from street lights out here, but we can fix that in uh, Photoshop or um, Lightroom, and I'll show you that here in a minute. One cool thing that you can do while you're doing long exposure photography, taking pictures at night, is light trails using your phone and stuff like that. Just as a bonus in this video, I'm gonna show you how you do that real quick. What I'm gonna do is go out there, take the same picture I've been taking, only I'm gonna turn my ISO down about a full stop. So I'm gonna turn it down to about 800, and I'm gonna go out there, take my phone, and I'm gonna write something cool out. Here's how you do that. Hopefully you can tell what that image is. So we're gonna take all these images, we're gonna take them back to the studio, and I'm gonna show you how to edit them once you get them in your camera, and how to get the most out of your images. Let's go. Okay, we are back in the studio, and we have imported all these into Lightroom. Uh, I've got like literally like six images here uh, that we, we're actually gonna use. This is gonna be the first image. I'm gonna go really quick through here and show you how to edit these. You'll notice that they get a little bit of an amber cast on this. That's just, I don't know why it does that. It's easy fix though. Grab the little highlighter tool and click anywhere in the sky and it's gonna turn into the blue color that the sky needs to be. Now I had an amber backlight behind me and it causes this all to be a lot brighter than what it should be. Super easy fix. I can either dial down the exposure, pull it back a little bit, but how I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna up the contrast and then lower the highlights and the whites. Um, because these, the stars in this setting are actually blown out, that's not gonna affect those at all. You can pull back this just a little bit and pop up your clarity a tad. And this gives you kind of the basics of how to edit this photo. I'm gonna go ahead and move through this now at a faster speed so you can just see my whole process on this. Every photo is gonna be different, so just do it however you like it on the editing side of things. So what we're gonna do is hit shift and then select all of these and hit paste. And that's going to paste our settings. Well, it's supposed to paste our settings to all of these. Sometimes it doesn't wanna work right. Okay, now that we got all these selected, we're gonna go up to photo, photo merge, and we're gonna to go to panorama. And then it's gonna kill my computer why it's, why it's putting it together. It's gonna to go easy on the editing, kinda of pull out the, the, the lights like I showed you, and then that's it. Well, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, be sure to put them in the comments below. Have a good one.